One of my first stops in this project was to the University of Hawaii. There I met with journalism professor Gerald Cato. Back in the mid-90s, a group of journalism students had requested some documents from the Honolulu Police Department regarding officers who had been suspended or fired for misconduct. He was the advisor to the students, so I show up to his office hoping to you know, pick his brain just a little bit about some of the historical facts, see if he could maybe lead me in the right direction. During the course of our conversation, he shows me in the corner of his office five large cardboard boxes with the word SHOPO written on the side of it, which uh, stands for the State of Hawaii Organization of Police Officers. That's the police union here. Inside of those boxes uh, was a plethora of information. We found court records from the mid-90s involving the lawsuits that the student journalists were involved in, the Hawaii Supreme Court ruling that ultimately said that police disciplinary records should be public. There were news, newspaper clippings from that time, both of the court battle as well as some of the legislative wrangling that went on uh, during the course of the court battle that ultimately changed the law uh, to make police disciplinary records for the most part secret. So our database used these annual legislative reports that really don't provide much information at all. They're very vague. There aren't any names uh, that are included. No dates, times, locations. Nothing that can really help you narrow down what actually happened in a particular incident. Some of them said an officer simply pleaded guilty to a misdemeanor and maybe got a single day off uh, of work without pay. Um, so. With, without names, without details, we relied on the numbers. Patty Epler is the editor of Civil Beat. Together we compiled a database of police misconduct using these annual legislative reports. Yeah, and I wonder if this is the one that includes uh, all those guys who got popped for the DUIs or for falsifying the DUI reports so they could get yeah. overtime pay. Was that in um, this year? In fact, when I was building it, we, would go, we went over each of the 512 incidents and uh, from there categorized them, making sure that we weren't unnecessarily categorizing an incident uh, as criminal or administrative when, in fact, the facts weren't there. So it was, it was actually a very good process. And so what we did is we took uh, an incident and classified it into many different categories, uh, whether it was assault, domestic violence, lying, falsification of records, criminal behavior, criminal conviction, property damage, uh, abuse of power, abuse of suspects, um, sexual harassment, uh, administrative uh, offenses. While the reports that the Honolulu Police Department sent to the legislature said that 25 officers were fired from 2000 to 2012, what we found in our investigation is that that's simply not true. Only 12 of those officers had in fact been fired. The remaining officers either had their discharges overturned, uh, they were reinstated most likely as a result of a union grievance process, um, and two were allowed to resign, which uh, the way the public records law is written, um, only discharged officers have their disciplinary files and names released. Uh, it says that officers who are merely suspended for misconduct have that information uh, kept confidential. So if you're allowed to resign as a police officer, uh, you know, even though you might have uh, been arrested or committed some other serious form of misconduct, you, uh, your disciplinary records are forever secret.